the game to see the boxing boys. Welcome back, gang, for the first time and hopefully many more to come. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and click on the notifications right here, this little bell, so you can get those emails every time we go live. The podcast is intended for mature audiences. The views and opinions expressed are those of the panelists and do not reflect in any way those of the podcast partners, sponsors, or affiliates. Enjoy. You need that fear. All I'm trying to do is make a stand for something that I truly believe is right. I truly believe is right. Yo, 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 what's up, what's up, everybody out there in the TBV universe? It's your boy, Mike. I'm back with another one, a.k.a. Girls1911, if you want to follow me on any kind of social media platforms. I got a little special segment that I'm trying out, you know what I'm saying? It's called the Boxing Voice Daily Recap, you know what I'm saying? I'm just going to give you a little quick rundown of everything that we went through today. And uh, I felt kind of bad because we we couldn't take callers this morning because, you know, Ness is on vacation, you know what I'm saying? He's probably somewhere over the, the, the uh, Atlantic or Jamaica or where, wherever he is. He's having fun, so he left me the keys to the car. So I just want to do something for our mastermind because they are one of our best supporters, and they really mean a lot to the brand. So I just want to give them a, a chance to voice their opinion on the topics that we had today. First off, we got Joseph in Texas. What's going on, Joseph? Hey, yo, what's good, Mike? Appreciate you having me on tonight. Uh, shout out to everybody. What's up, TBV? Live here reporting on uh, out of Plainview, Texas. Uh, we're going to go over some some of a recap today of uh, Amir Khan's comments about Terrence Crawford, some Joshua Miller news, maybe even some Keith Thurman and uh, and uh, Manny Pacquiao news. Already, already. Big ups to, to you, Joseph. Jay, my, my man, Jay Hardcore out in Texas, man. Y'all guys probably seen Jay's, Jay's videos starting to get published on our channel, man. He's out here uh, doing his thing. He was in the uh, Omar Douglas camp. Tomorrow, he got some more news for you. So, uh, Jay, man, what's going on, Big Doc? What's up, my homie? Uh, hello to all my TBV family and brethren. Yeah, man, I'm looking forward to uh, doing this recap today. We had a lot of stuff going on today, so I want to dig into it. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to get down to uh, the Gary Russell gym tomorrow. I'm going to get y'all some good footage and get some interviews going on, you know, because, you know, one thing about Gary Russell, he always got something to say, so I'm looking forward to hearing from him. Absolutely, man. Gary has always got something very provocative or interesting uh, to say so it should be some great interviews tomorrow but uh let's go ahead and get right into it man you guys got the floor uh first off let's start with the amir khan and, and, and terrence crawford what did you guys think about amir khan's comment when he said uh if i beat terrence crawford i will go down as a great champion you go ahead and break it down and, and, and just give me uh are you guys a thought jay go first well you know what I always said that uh, Mir Khan is a good fighter, man. Uh, his biggest problem is his self. He always gets in the way, you know what I mean, of when he's doing well. I believe when, well, I don't even believe, I know when he was fighting Canelo, he was ahead of the game. And he started getting a little bit too, uh, what word would I want to use for that? He he just got greedy, you know what I mean? And his his greed allowed him to go to sleep, you know. So one thing about Khan, he don't lose rounds. He normally uh, be rolling with the fight. He normally be winning the fight. He be winning all the rounds. And then he sticks that chin out and he goes night-night. But uh, if he beat uh, Crawford, oh, wow. That would be one of the biggest upsets of... uh, (laughs) <laughs> of the last 10 years, bro. I'm going to be truthfully honest. I mean, I think if Amir Khan beats uh, Terrence Crawford, we had to put Mike on a 24-hour suicide watch. But, uh, you know, that's no here, no there. So uh, do I think he can beat uh, Crawford? I don't. 
I think he's going to give him a good fight as long as he's going to give him a good fight. And then the uh, con that we know will rear his ugly head and then he will go night night. Yeah, man, we're definitely going to see come, uh, come uh, I believe, April 20th. Uh, but, Joseph, real quick, uh, what's your thoughts on the whole American thing? Now, I know you're you're down in, in Texas. Hopefully you're not drinking that same mar- water Mario's drinking. I don't know, man. Uh, I'm a little disappointed in Mario, first off, comparing my Dallas Cowboys to the to Amir Khan. So, but we we're gonna we're gonna move past that. Uh, no, man. But really, with Amir Khan, um, I agree with Jay. You know, he he tends to get in his own way. Um, there was a lot of hype around him. You know what I mean? Building up, he's never lost a fight where he wasn't competitive and thought to be winning in. Maybe the British Prescott fight because it was so quick. You know, but he was beating Danny Garcia. He's beating the hell out of Danny Garcia. Um, he was out boxing Canelo. Uh, the Lamont Peterson fight. We, you know, we just did the fight chat on that. I actually had him winning it by a point. You know, uh, contrary to what Ness would would have you believe. But um, you know, he's always competitive, and I think I think he's right. I think uh, it would put him down as one of the greats to beat Terence Crawford, who right now is uh, almost a consensus. At least I think we can say he's a consensus top one or two pound for pound, depending on who you're asking. Uh, it would prove a lot of things to a lot of people that, that Amir Khan was, had so much potential. There's a reason he was in talks for the Mayweather fight. Uh, and, and a lot of people truly believe that Mayweather avoided him. And the hand speed, you know, and, and Amir Khan at his prime. Um, but I just, I just don't see Amir Khan being able to, at this point with all the damage taken, he's gotten noticeably slower. So I think I think he'd be able to be competitive, but I think ultimately uh, Terrence Crawford should get the job done and get him out of there. Yeah, man, we're we're definitely going to see come March twentieth. All right, well, put a little button on that. Uh, you, you guys, if you guys want my opinion, got got to go back and check out this morning's uh, episode. Uh, real quick, let, let's go ahead and move to the big news that happened today: the heavyweight heavyweight news that happened. Big Baby Miller and the man. Anthony Joshua will make his U.S. debut against Big Baby Miller at Madison Square Garden. Uh, Joseph, let's go, let's start with you uh, 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 this time. What did you think about the news, and, and uh, what was your first feelings and thoughts when you first heard the news? My first thought was relief. Uh, you know, Mike, I mean, uh, it's been a long waiting game, especially with AJ. You know, he's been out of the ring since September. It's going to be a nine-month layoff by the time this fight gets there, but I'm – I'm definitely glad that we're getting the ball moving and kind of seeing where this heavyweight division is going. I feel like as fans, we've all been frustrated. And at first, I was a little iffy on the fight. I mean, Big Baby is an excellent fighter. For a man of his size, he has a great conditioning. Uh, he's someone that I actually I use as inspiration when I'm in the gym myself. You know, the man is over 300 pounds, and he's, he, can, he can probably go through 12 rounds and throw an immaculate number of punches, which is – you know, it's just rare to see. You you look at him, you wouldn't think that. Uh, and then you know, just to see the post he's had today. You know the the you know the post he put on Twitter. Um, you got sugar in your in your tank. I'm gonna make Kool Aid out of you. You know that right there. It, it's it's what AJ needs. AJ needs a fall. He needs someone that's gonna talk trash. You know, be brash. And uh, I'm actually more excited from it, thanks to Big Baby's trash talk. Uh, like I said, and then also just to get the division moving. And I, I don't think that Big Baby's as big of an underdog as people realize. I think, you know, muscles wear you down more than more than anything else. And, and I think unless AJ can get him out of there with a big shot early, he's going to be in for a rough long night. And and although you got to favor AJ, I would not be surprised to see Big Baby pull it off. Uh, in, his, in New York, nonetheless. So uh, we'll see what happens, but uh, I'm definitely more interested now than I was leading into it. Before we go to Jay, real quick, uh, uh, Joseph, what did you feel about uh, Joshua making his uh, U.S. debut against Big Baby at Madison Square Garden? How do you feel about him coming over to the States? I think it's long overdue. I mean, the the realistic thing is is America's got a lot of media, a lot of high profile, and you've heard it from other U.K. fighters before. You know, they all want to fight in the States. Uh Everybody from Lennox Lewis to, uh, you know, you got Carl Froch, um, Prince Prince Nassim Hamed, Amir Khan. They've all come over. Uh, this is where the money's at. And AJ looks like he's about his money, you know, and, and I would expect nothing less. So I think it's a, it's about, it's long overdue, I think. 
Yeah, man. Jay, same question goes to you, man. Both questions. Um, what did you feel about the news and what do you think about AJ making his uh US debut against uh uh um uh big baby over here in the States? You know what? I was actually happy when I heard the news, to be truthfully honest. The reason why is because I feel though that Joshua does need to uh come over here and raise his profile because I feel though that the casuals do not know who who Joshua is. And being though that they don't know who Joshua is, you know what I mean? It's not going to really make the fight as huge as it should be. You know, and also when it comes to Big Baby Miller, Big Baby Miller is not a uh, household name either. You know, we are, we hardcores definitely know who he is. But so we got two pretty much unknown guys about the fight, which still doesn't take away from the fight because I think it's going to be a hellacious fight, to be truthfully honest. It's something uh, that Joseph said uh, that really cued me in. I didn't even realize it is that Joshua hasn't fought since September. That's nine months, you know, and Big Baby has fought about four times in the last four months, probably. So, you know, one thing about boxing, man, the more you box, the sharper you get. So I feel, though, that uh, Big Baby's going to be the more sharper person in uh, that particular bout. I feel, though, that uh, Joshua's going to have to knock off some of that rust first. And one thing about Big Baby, man, he comes like a freight train. He's always bringing that heat, and it's always high intensity at all times. You know what I mean? And for a heavyweight, he throws a lot of punches, and a lot of people can't handle that pace. You know what I mean? So I really think he's going to be dictating the pace in this fight. Uh, I just hope that he doesn't do a con and get overzealous and, you know, get chin checked. But that's 315 pounds you got to knock down now. It's not 245, 260. And I've been watching uh, tape on Joshua lately. He's coming in light. He's been losing weight. So I feel, though, that he's going to come in if I'm not mistaken, man, he might come in about 239, 240, something like that. And that's going to allow Big Baby to have the weight advantage big time. So one thing I like about the heavyweight division, man, anything can happen. That's why we love to watch the big boys fight. So, yeah, that's pretty much how I see that, Mike. And real quick, uh, we had a tweet from uh, John Skipper, and John Skipper is the uh, executive chairman of the, the Zone Group. So uh, he says, Anthony Joshua has the potential to be a international superstar at the level of LeBron or Ronaldo. AJ U U.S. debut on June 1st at Madison Square Garden is the next step to global awareness. Keep in mind, there was a time when the heavyweight champion was the most famous man in the world. What do you guys think about that? Joseph or Jay, um, you guys take it away. Uh, I'll go ahead and go first. Um, yeah, man, you know what? AJ, he has the personality, he has the look, um, that, that definitely says, you know, he's, he's he looks like a star, you know what I mean? He looks like an Adonis. The thing I think that he's gonna have trouble with is, um, the fact that it's on the zone, man, and not a lot of people have the zone. I think if AJ's, you know, if they were doing this on like a showtime. Or you know, ESPN, even a HBO. If HBO was still around, I think this would do tremendous, tremendously more numbers. Um, I think if the Zone can find a way to get this on a regular cable channel, like find, you know, maybe even NBC Sports or somebody to say, hey, give us a thirty-minute special. Let us talk about the heavyweight champion of the world making his U.S. debut. Have him on there, and then have have some video of Jarrell Miller, you know, talking trash. Make it an interesting, you know what I mean? Everybody loves to have the the good guy versus bad guy. And and Jarrell Miller, he'll get a lot of popularity off that because, uh, you know, us Americans, a lot of us are brash and, and you know, and like that kind of talk. It, and we're split. Some of us like it, some of us don't. So the ones that like it, we're going to watch to see Jarrell Miller win. And some guys will watch to see AJ win. And, and But so I think if they can find a network, any kind of sports network, Obviously, ESPN's out the door, and so is FS1. So maybe if you can get NBC to give you 30 minutes, you know, prime time after like a basketball game or, or something like that, uh, that would do wonders for this promotion. I think there's plenty of time to do that, and it's something they should look into. 
in order to and if, and if they can do that, I think they can. They have the potential to make the biggest star in the world, uh, which the heavyweight champion rightfully should be. You know, I would love to see him and Deontay Wilder take their place as as household names that you know that the people can embrace. Jay, yeah, I tell you what, boy. Joseph is hitting the all key points, to be truthfully honest, man, for sure. Because right now, the zone is at grassroots. You know what I mean? And I, it'll probably be a great establishment later. But right now, it's grassroots. So nobody barely knows about him. Again, that's hardcore. And for Joshua to be playing on that platform right now, and he is the heavyweight champion of the world. You know, that's not good for him. He needs to get as much exposure as possible. So I don't know what type of uh, publicity or whatever they're going to do while he's here to really uh, get him out there. But like uh, Joseph said, he needs to be on some main platforms, man. He needs to be on a CBS. He needs to be on a Showtime. ESPN. He needs to be on something like that where the most eyes are able to be laid on him. Because as I say again, no one knows. I mean, yo, he's a mega star over in the UK, but the UK is no bigger than where Joseph lives right now. It's no bigger than Texas. Now he's in the big water, and he needs to go around and swim with the big fish. The only way you're going to swim with the big fish is you got to get on the big networks, man. The zone is in their grassroots. They don't have the exposure to give him. And all it's doing is actually hurting Joshua right now. Well, um, I don't know, man. I think the zone is doing a damn good job. And by having Anthony Joshua and by having Canelo and by having Danny Jacobs, by having uh, all these guys that, are named in the sports is going to make the hardcore fan uh, uh, tell some of, uh, of their friends about it. And also it's going to uh, make the casual fan seek out Canelo and seek out Anthony Josh, because maybe you want to see the guys fight. Maybe you, you seen uh, Joshua uh, on the breakfast club or, or, or uh, ESPN or, or whatever uh, media tour that they're going to do because Eddie said they're having a uh, presser in the States next Tuesday and then taking a whole week to do a presser over in London. So that tells me that they're going to spend some time over in the States and do some, some, uh, some media, uh, media obligation and, and, and media tour. So you might see them, uh, on Joe Rogan. You might see them on different networks, but, but go ahead, uh, Joseph. Yeah. I was just going to say the smart thing would be to do is like, what you do is have him on like good morning America. Then you can have him like, have him on NBA tonight, you know, have him showing up at, at, after, at opening day of, of baseball, you know, get him, get him out there to the casual sports fans and let them know, Hey, I'm going to be fighting here. And this is where you can find me. So I think you're right. A lot of media is going to do well. Like, you know, show up at Knicks games, show up, uh, anything he can show up on, you know what I mean? Anything televised. I think even him, maybe if he could have got to some of these award shows the past weekend would have been a big help too. Just to kind of just he you got in order to be a star you gotta you gotta walk around like you're a star and get and, and I think if we treat him like a star, it'll become that. And also we heard the rumors of uh, the uh, Pavekin fight being having low numbers on the zone. One thing that I wanted to uh, take away from that is that fight was shown during the daytime over in the states. So a prime time fight with Anthony Joshua, the heavyweight champion of the world, should should a, a, a attract more more eyes to. Uh, to uh other zone but but before we wrap this up uh I, I want you to guys if you guys got anything like any final thoughts on something that we didn't cover that you want to get off your chest real quick feel free to do it and uh when you get your final thoughts go ahead and give out your social media and uh let the people know uh uh like uh what brought you to tpv and and uh and uh, why you d uh, decided to become a mastermind also jay jay is uh going to uh gary russell's camp to, uh tomorrow he's going to be getting some good footage and uh also joseph is going to be a member of our border wars uh that's not the one uh in texas but the one that we're going to do for the wilder and, and, and furry matchup so uh, but both these guys will be in down in Texas uh, for that event. So if you guys want to meet them, this is a perfect time to do it. But uh, Jay or Joseph, take it away. 
Yeah, uh, I try to think of you know I have anything else to say about the day. I mean, I think we pretty much uh, wrapped it up uh, in a pretty good uh, bow there. Uh, my uh, social media is uh. Well, what what is my social media? When you get old like me, man, you forget all this type of stuff. At, at Hardcore Boxing News fifty on IG and Hardcore Boxing News on YouTube. Appreciate that, uh, son. Uh, uh, <laughs> what 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 made you uh become a mastermind, man? What really made me uh, become a mastermind because I really got a chance to speak to other people that are like minded like me. Uh, that really eat, sleep, and breathe boxing. I mean, this is all I think about at all times of the day i love the sport i'm always searching the news and now i'm around like-minded people that are exactly like me doing the same exact thing we talk boxing all day long every minute of the day and i love it man i finally got a chance to be around people like me and i'm gonna tell you i love every bit of it bro so if you're like that this is where you need to be i i kid you not I really enjoyed all the uh, information that I was getting from the, uh, the boxing voice. And uh, I knew they were hardcores. And, you know, hardcores want to be around hardcore. There ain't nothing worse when you're out in the public, you're talking boxing, and you're the smartest person around when it comes to the boxing. I'd like to be able to talk boxing. And they're not just talking about the, the latest news, but they know about all facets of all the boxing. You know what I mean? And that's what we get here. We get down and dirty. That's why I like the boxing boys. Joseph, take it away. Uh, yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at Garces underscore Joseph. And then I don't really get Instagram, but my Snapchat is uh, JosephRG.56. Um, final thoughts over the day, man. Just, I think, like Jay said, we pretty much covered it all, man. Like um, like I said, the closer we get into it, I think, I think we'll start to realize that Big Baby's not as big of an underdog as people think. And uh, and I hope people take that seriously. Um, why I became a mastermind, man? You know what? It's kind of like Jay said. I, I love talking boxing. I've been a hardcore boxing fan since I was a little kid. Uh, my my parents used to order all the Oscar De La Hoya fights, you know. And and I just, you know, I've always loved watching boxing. And uh, out on the truck, man, you know, you get tired of listening to music all day. I've always subscribed to TBV, but I never started really hearing the podcast. It was actually. It was actually when uh, Mike came around, I, I noticed the consistency really picked up with Mike, uh, and I started listening more and more. And I was once I was every day listening, you know, I, I first I joined Patreon, then I wanted to be more involved, wanted to help more. And being a mastermind is just that, you know, you have input, you're able to, you know, help, you're able to help make the show what it is, and help these guys. You know, it, these guys work hard. You know, it, it may not seem like it, but these guys put in a lot of hours, a lot of time, and they're very dedicated. Um, but yeah, I, I truly enjoy it. Um, I will be participating in the next Border Wars. I was hoping to get in this one. You can catch my brother in this one. I'll be actually helping him get ready for that. And uh, just so you know, the South does run rap. I'm never gonna let that argument go, Mike. We have a uh, we've been playing some chameleon there. Get your shine on just for you in camp. So, uh, but yeah, man. I anybody who out here who listens to TBV, man, whatever. Even if you get the three dollar pledge, man, it's definitely worth the subscription. And if you can get in that mastermind, if, if you if you can handle it, I definitely would suggest it, man. And I just want to again say I appreciate all these guys here at TVV, man. They work extremely hard. And uh, all of us masterminds, man, you know, we it's a good time in there, man. It's all love at the end of the day. Absolutely. And uh, if you listen listen right now on YouTube, go ahead and smash that thumbs up button. It helps with the visibility of the show. And also, if you want to maybe do this one day, go ahead and go over to uh, – Patreon.com slash the boxer voice and go ahead and sign up, man, and become a Patreon member. And maybe you two can be a mastermind. Until next time, peace out. Yo, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to hit the like, subscribe, and share. As always, if you want to support us to the next level, head over to the Patreon.com backslash the boxing voice. We have tons of exclusive from Border Wars, entitled betting shows, the list goes on and on and on. But in addition to that, if you guys have questions for fighters, trainers, and promoters, this is where you can submit them. We will run out, get these questions answered, and put it back on the show just for you guys. Appreciate it. Peace.